Hey guys, Sven here with a new Northcast market update titling this mega bull for August 20th. We're in the middle of a nasty correction again. It's not dramatic yet, and it's pretty sizable though in some of the readings that we see. And it's coming at an odd time of the year, August. And I came across something I think you may find fascinating, and it makes the case for mega bull. I know, we're barely corrected here. So let me walk you through some considerations. First, as I like to do, is so just a little backup of previous videos. So we put in the context. And so you know I'm not completely off the wall here with some of the things I'm saying. Coming correction, July 17th. The view was that we're going to get a correction, right? And it was this risk zone I had outlined. And with a view, it could drop into this range and the view was as it were to drop then we would assess the charts and figure out you know how deep how bad this could get and then we would have some sort of bounce and then that bounce would decide whether we're going to get either rally to new highs or we're going to get a big nasty bear market still to come that was kind of here keeping open mind in terms of possibilities and that remains my view. I, I just want to emphasize, no matter what I'm saying here now, I remain completely open-minded here in terms of what could happen. And let me just update the chart here. Uh, we spent three weeks in this risk zone. We had one little poke above it. That was definitely a challenge in terms of conviction. It's like, uh, are you off your case or what? But no, it reverted right off of there. We made that little tiny high. And since then, we've just corrected hard three weeks down in a row. And we've officially entered that original risk zone. Now, the FIP was a little higher than the original projection because we went a little higher in terms of the high. But basically, the principal view of a 23.6 FIP pullback right on the money. And I'm, again, I'm not saying this is over. I mean, we got the Fed Jackson Hole this week. We got NVIDIA earning coming. You know, God knows what's happening with China. Uh, so there's all kinds of legitimate concerns in terms of more volatility. So I remain open-minded. But we did hit that 23.6 FIP perfectly on Friday. And we bounced off of there. Here's a daily chart just to accentuate that. And, you know, drop below the 50 MA. So you, you can make a solid bear case, even if it rallies from here. For example, just to throw this out there and staying in spirit of staying open-minded you know if this bounces from here and can't really get above the 50 ma for example you can make the case this can set up for a beautiful right shoulder technically speaking and then you have a head and shoulders if that plays in such a way and firms up the measured move would be around here 50 uh, 40 51 or two or something like that so in 50 percent retrace of the entire rally uh, and that could set up for september october for example right so i just wanted to highlight that as well but now let's look at this actual correction here because it is a bit unusual in the sense that we you know we, we just pulled back here back to let's say roughly the june lows but something else happened and this is another critical concern here so and this is why before i go into the specifics on that i just want to highlight another key chart that i pointed out in may the unthinkable everybody was in a train lower yields are coming right and i had put out this chart on the tnx which to me smelled like a big fat bull flag uh, which screamed for higher yields i will submit to you uh, this chart has played absolutely technically beautiful i mean forget all the macro printing TGA account refilling, what have you. I'm just looking at the technicals of this chart. The premise was for bull flag and it would break out. Well, here we go. It not only broke out, it back tested it and now went vertical. Okay. And I submit to you two things. First of all, the surprising part of all this was that the market ignored all this initially. Uh, obviously, we did. We made new highs for the year in at the end of July and the 10 year was already you know, well above where it was in May. So it didn't matter. But it certainly seemed to have mattered here in the last couple of weeks, right? Last three weeks, this breakout now getting everybody's attention. There's two ways of looking at this, right? 
I mean, it's, it's this break between the bond market and the stock market. Now that the stock market is paying attention, you know, if this again reverses, you can look at a potential double top, which could actually be very supportive for bulls, right? So bears now have a challenge here because, you know, if this keeps rallying up, then of course, you know, you can see a lot more downside in equities. But, you know, this is now an interesting point in the cycle. Personally, I have a hard time to see yields staying anywhere near this level. Despite the bull flag that I pointed out in, in May, this could be, you know, just a temporary phenomenon because ultimately the entire debt structure economy cannot handle these type of yields for longer. That's my premise. That would, that's what would get you into, your, into a recession. But ironically, you know, dropping yields is also usually a, a recession warning sign, right? Because you see that in every cycle, and that's when you end up with rate cuts and so forth. So this is a, this is a pivotal phase now here, what's going on with yields. And the answer and how they develop, not only in direction, but in terms of how it's being interpreted from a macro perspective, uh, is it basically requires an open mind, Abs absolutely. But having reached this point now with this correction, in markets, this is where I want to tell you a wild story. Okay, so first of all, one of the signal charts we look at in general is NIMO, it's the McClellan oscillator, and he got thumped. It got thumped hard this last week, down to 96 or so. Uh, a couple of comments to make there. These type of readings are rare. They happened quite a few times last year when we were in this bear phase. Uh, but they're an indicator of being very oversold. March, obviously, with the banking crisis, and invariably, they produce rallies. General comment, the, it doesn't mean the lows are in. Oftentimes, what you see is a new low following a bounce on a positive divergence for a higher low on the NIMO before you get a proper low in, okay? But not always. It's not always required. For example, in March, that wasn't required, right? Low was in, bang. These are oversold readings, they tend to lead to rallies. And these rallies either produce new lows or they don't. So keep that in mind. Why is this of interest? Because it's happening in August. And frankly, you know, we, we had a low reading last August in the spare phase, but August readings are very, very rare. So I want to show you some examples of August readings and what that means for markets. August NIMO readings, deep down minus... 75 minus 80 minus 100 that type of thing so here's one example 2019 uh, that's when we had a NIMO reading about minus 80 we had a low we had a bunch of chop and that was it for the rest of the year this is now where I go into this whole mega bull thing um, because they are so rare now if you look at this in terms of what the Fed was doing, it's very different, right? Because the Fed was cutting rates, and then ultimately they added to their balance sheet. But nevertheless, this was a gnarly August correction, and it ended up producing new highs. Here's 2015. We had a nasty event in August 2015, and China, incidentally, was the trigger. And then guess what happened? Global intervention, right? And you had a big rally into September, you had a higher low in October, and then a big rally for all of October, and then chop uh, for the rest of the year, okay? But that was bullish, that was a buy, right? Go into the next example, 2011. Again, they're very rare, uh, so I had to really look for these. There is an event. Similar to 2015, big flush in August. That one was really nasty, minus 140 on NIMO. And we then got a rally into September, bunch of chop, a marginal lewd low in October, and then it rallied hard in October again. Okay. And I'll have another point to make about all of these charts in a, in a minute. 2007, we all know about that example, right? Guess what? There was a big flush at the end of July, another nasty reading in, uh, in August, and that was kind of that positive divergence example I was talking about, but nevertheless, August was gnarly for markets, and guess what happened? We made new all-time highs in October. Big rally followed suit, right? 
Another example, 2003. What happened in 2003? 2002 was obviously a recession. We came out of the recession, but another gnarly reading in August, minus 75 or so. And that was it. We just rallied basically the rest of the year with some volatility in September. Um, produced no highs, right, for that year. And then here's another famous example, 1999 tech bubble, right? Well, guess what? That had an August reading that was down to minus 75. And then we had a rally into late August and then some chop in marginal new lows in October and September. And then a big year end rally, as we all know. So what's the message here? We're looking at all these years. And this is kind of the mind blower here. The mind blower is, maybe if you've already noticed, they're all odd number of years, 99, 2003, 7, 11, 15, 19, 23, with a very specific sequence. Every single one of these has was a presidential, U.S. presidential pre-election year, every one of them. And every one of them had a nasty NIMO reading in August, and every one of them had big rallies that followed suit. And guess what? Here we are in 2023. And while some of them may have had a back test for a higher low or a marginal new low, the message was the same. They were all buys, and they were, there was no more big correction that followed after that. They may have had chop in between, but no big new lows anymore. That was it. In fact, if you look at this on this yearly chart, here's the big message. 1999. Yeah, recession followed through, but first we had new highs that followed into the beginning of the year. Did I mention 2003? New highs followed in 2004. 2007 made new highs the same year before the financial crisis hit. 2011 went on to make new highs. 2015 went on to make new highs in 2016. 2019 went on to make new highs before the COVID crash in, in 2020. So all of these things have two very consistent messages. One is that neither of them produced excessive new lows, all of which occurred during U.S. presidential pre presidential previous presidential election years, and new highs were coming. So. That's kind of bullish, isn't it? And it basically suggests buy the dip uh, at the end of the day, whatever weakness comes this year. Now, obviously, as I said, I stay open-minded. Maybe things are going to turn out differently, as in like that head and shoulders I mentioned. Who knows? But I'm just suggesting this is a very pretty clear track record for all of these years, all of them presidential pre-election years, all of them ended up in new highs, either the same year or the following year. And yes, you can you can have nasty bear markets like we saw in, in 2000 then and then in 2008, but not before bear hits got ripped off. And, you know, since I just discovered that relationship on accident myself, I'm thinking of an old Seinfeld episode for those guys of you who remember the 90s Seinfeld. That was this famous girlfriend episode, and George discovered plutonium by accident, basically. You, if you know the reference, you know the reference. If you don't, you have to Google it up on, on YouTube. Anyway, a fascinating year. I'm suggesting to you that the corrective case has been playing out. We're getting some very solid oversold readings, whether those were the lows on Friday or not, to be determined. Usually you don't make flows on Friday, um, but all of those charts suggest that weakness in August is a buy for at least a September, early September rally. And then we'll have to continue to assess the charts in terms of how they play out. If you want to join us on this journey, I've been noodling through this, um, you know, navigating rather through these market gyrations. You're welcome to join us via northmantrader.com, market services, and I aim to put out a market video tomorrow to go a lot more detailed on the technicals and strategy and so forth. Hope that's helpful, but um, I'm, I'm just saying, history, those charts, 
that precedence suggests new highs are coming vis-a-vis -vis what we've seen so far this year and then to be determined with what else is, is happening, recession risk or what have you. Uh, that's what these charts say and they, in that context they would be mega bullish, right? Anyway, good luck next week. I'll catch you guys next time around.